win, right? When, when people go to the Super Bowl, they go to the Super Bowl to win. Nobody remembers the losers. Everybody knows that Tom Brady has won six Super Bowls, right? This is his 10th Super Bowl going in. He's going to be remembered as, as not the ones that he lost, but how many he has won. He's already won more Super Bowls than any other quarterback, right? And, and, and Michael Jordan is remembered by his championships. How many championships did Michael Jordan win? Kobe had less championships than Michael Jordan. So people say that's why Jordan was better. Right, and, and they, they make comparisons with, with uh, LeBron James and so many things. But the Bible says that we need to run the race to win. And I, and I think we need to win the now uh, because we are moving into a new normal. And, and as we're moving to our goals, as we're moving towards life, and, and, and we, we, you guys know that um, there's a hashtag called winning or hashtag called goals, right? When you see something, you're like, hashtag goals, right? Somebody's vacationing, hashtag goals. That's, that's where I want a vacation, right? And, and so today, hashtag goals. How do we, how do we win in, in, the, in the new normal? What, what does that look like? So Luke chapter 19 says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, and man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. Uh, we'll just call him Zach. He was the chief tax collector and was wealthy. Somebody, everybody say wealthy. All right. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, say shorty. Are you, you guys, you guys gotta, gotta wake up. It's, it's already noon. We, it's game day. We gotta be on it. All right. Can somebody type shorty there in the, in the, in the chat? If you're watching, uh, I want to make sure you're with us too. So it says he wanted to see Jesus, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him because Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said, hey, Zach, come on down immediately. I just, I just, I, I must stay at your house today. Okay. And then the Bible says, verse six, so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw and began to mutter, say, mutter. In Spanish, we say chismear. It's, 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 it's a different, trans, it's, it's a, my translation, right? But it, it's, uh, I'm working on my own Bible translation. Y'all look out for that. But so, so um, it's, it's muttered. He said, but they began to mutter, all the people. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. So first of all, they were talking about Jesus going into a house that they didn't think he should go to. Second of all, they were talking about how they saw Zach. They saw Zach as as evil, as a sinner. Okay? And then we continue. So he came down at once and he went, they they muttered and said he's going to be the guest of a sinner, verse 8. But Zach stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody of anything, I will pay back four times of the amount. Say four times. Can, Can somebody go bring me the donuts that we had in that room? Some people need sugar here. (laughs) <laughs> we got one person that ate donuts. If we still have some left, we'll put them in the bag so everybody can have. Okay, and then, um, so, so listen, it said, it said I'm going to give four times, uh, uh, I'm going to give uh, half of my possessions to the poor, say half, half of my possessions to the poor, and anybody I have cheated out of anything, I will pay them back four times, say four. Okay, then Jesus said to him, today, Salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. To seek and to save the lost. I have a few things that I want to tell you. If you're taking notes, I'm, we're going we're gonna to have four points and then we're going to go home. We're going to get ready. Maybe we're going to take a little nap for those of us that are older. So in case, in case the game goes into overtime, right? How, how many of you need a nap? Amen. All of us uh, over 35. Okay. And, and so even Jeremiah's like, I need a nap too. Just don't nap right now. Okay. We're going to make it short so y'all can nap later. All right. Here we go. Number one, I want you to write down that Zach, he was searching. Say searching. searching. Type searching. He was searching. 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 <laughs> it's because I looked down and I saw Andrea type shorty and I wanted to laugh. But yes, shorty, she's, she's taking notes. Okay. Great. So 
He was searching. The story tells us that he had a job, that, that he was the chief, the chief tax, tax collector. Maybe he made it to CEO, chief operating officer, or the chief financial officer. I don't know what hashtag goals you have in your life, but I want to tell you that the normal is that when you have the position that you want, you should be happy. Then when you have the position that you want, you should be fulfilled. But we have Zach being the chief tax collector. We have him being the, the chief financial officer of the entire town. And that still wasn't good enough. The, the old normal said, when you get to that position of ranking, when you have that title, when you have that doctor, that comma under your, your, uh, next to your name, comma, PhD, comma, doctor, comma, lawyer, comma, CFO, comma, business owner, whatever it may be, the, new, the old normal says, that's when you should be happy. That's when you've achieved everything. But the new normal says, that's not sufficient. You need to keep searching because that still is not enough. That's not enough. And the Bible says that, that Zach was also wealthy. The, the old normal says when you get to a certain amount of money, you're going to be happy because you have wealth. But the new normal that God is telling us is that wealth doesn't equal to happiness. Wealth does not equal to happiness. So even you can see a beautiful car on Instagram, a beautiful house, and you can hashtag goals all you want, but you don't know that the people that are living in that beautiful house are going through a divorce. Maybe they're going through counseling. The people that are buying and riding on that car are full of debt, and they can barely even enjoy it because it's so expensive to have. The, the old normal says when you get money, you will be happy. When you get money, you will, you will be fulfilled. But the new normal says position and wealth doesn't equal to happiness and fulfillment in your life. Something was still missing from Zach. Something was still missing because it was not enough. And we see that he was still searching. Uh, uh, Blaise Pascal says, if God exists, not searching for him is the greatest error imaginable. If God exists, for us not to seek him is the greatest thing, is the, the greatest error we can make. So if God does exist, then we need to search him. And if you know him, you need to search him at a deeper level. No matter how successful you are, if you do not have God in your life, you are hashtag incomplete. If you do not have God in your life, you are never going to be complete no matter what position you hold, no matter how much wealth you have. Some people are searching for a bailout. Some people are searching because for relief. They're searching just to, to leave their burdens upon somebody. Matthew 11, and Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30 says, Come to me, all you who are worried and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon, upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There are so many people that have the position, that have the the money that have the influence that have gone through life and you would think they have a they have it perfect but they're still searching my question is is somebody here searching for god is somebody watching searching for god the second thing i want you to write down is he was determined say determined somebody type it on the on the chat determined he was determined. We don't know. We, maybe, maybe it was because of Jesus' fame. Maybe, maybe Zach had already heard about how famous Jesus was. Maybe he, he had just heard that he had healed people, and, and maybe he just was there. He was determined and searching to see the show, to see what all the fuzz was about. The, the truth of the matter is, is that he was there. Maybe it was curiosity. I don't know why you're in here today, and I don't know maybe why you're watching or you will be watching on our YouTube channel, but maybe it, it's, it's not just that, that you're searching. Instead, you're a little curious. What if there is a God and, and I'm missing out? What if that is a void? That it, what, if, what if he is the one that's going to uh, fill the void that I still have inside of me? Maybe it's just curiosity, whatever it may be. But we know that Zach was determined because the crowd didn't allow him to get to Jesus. I imagine, I imagine Zacchaeus as being, uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, any of you uh, watch um, Games of uh, Throne. If you don't watch it, don't watch it. It's not really a good, good show to watch. But there is a character that's a, a, little, a little like, like a midget guy. He is always fighting for the throne and, and um, 
I forget his name, but that's, that's how I picture Zacchaeus. Because that guy looks kind of evil. He looks like he'll stab you in the back, right? And, 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 and he looks like he's going to, he, he just wants to, what's for, for number one, for himself. And he goes around uh, the, uh, the, the town and he's, he's only watching out for himself. He wants to be king. But I imagine Zacchaeus being a short guy like that. And, and so he couldn't see over the people. There was too much crowd. There was too much commotion. There were so many people in search of Jesus, so many people uh, uh, wanting to see Jesus. He couldn't get to the front. He had the position. He had the money, and he, and he still was at a distance. He was still at a disadvantage. I don't know what has been your disadvantage, but I want you to know that no matter what you've been going through, it may be your past that has put you at a disadvantage. It, it, it may be your culture, it may be your upbringing, it may be different things, it may be a sin in your life that has been keeping you far from God, but he was determined, he was determined to not let the size of the crowd keep him from Jesus. He was determined not to let the size of his own physical body keep him from Jesus. I don't know, are you, are you short in a sense? Are you short because you grew up poor? Are you short because you grew up without a mother or without a father? Are you short because you just were, were neglected or abused? Or are, are you dealing with some own insecurities and some own things in your life that are keeping you from Jesus? I want you to have the attitude of Zacchaeus. I want you to have the attitude of Zach and said, this year in 2021, I'm going to be determined. I'm going to find ways to seek Jesus. And Zach, he pushed away his pride. And he went ahead. He's like, I think they're walking that way. I'm going to run that way, and I'm going to go up the tree. He had position, and he had money, but he still had to climb a tree, and he still had to face people saying, look at Zach up there, shorty. Look at Zach up there, loser. He couldn't see. He had to get, hey, everybody, you guys see Zach up there? He was going to be made fun of. He was, he was going to, to, to be looked at weird, right? People didn't even like him to begin with. Right? They saw him as a sinner, and he didn't care. He was determined. He was determined. So today I want to tell you, don't let your past mistakes keep you from getting to Jesus. Be determined to find him. I don't know what things have come up short in your life. I don't know what makes you feel like you come up short from being able to be close to Jesus. But today, you, we need to be determined Billy Graham says, don't let the past mistakes keep you from seeking God. Is it something or someone that is preventing you from getting to Jesus? See, the, 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 the old normal would say, look, maybe pay a couple of guys to lift you. Maybe, look, don't even worry about it. You have position. You have power. Jesus will come and go. It, it's a fad. They're going to forget about him. After that, you can go and tax them even more. Make them pay for not, for not allowing you to get close. That's what the old normal would be. Oh, those guys made, those guys made fun of me. I'm going to make them pay. Oh, th those guys were in my way. They're going to see who I really am. But the new normal says I need to be determined to find Jesus and, and, and make a way, make room. Push away my pride. The third thing I want you to write down is Jesus came to him. Jesus actually knew his name. He called him out. He said, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. Jesus knows your name. I, I, you may feel like you have a past. You may feel like you have a deficiency. You may feel like you're not good enough. You may feel like you're one in the crowd of many. Jesus knows your name. And Jesus wants to come to you. And if you're listening online or you're here, I want you to know that Jesus is here and he wants to have an individual relationship with you. And, and what I really, really like is that many of us come on Sundays and we get to experience, we get to have an experience. We get to experience God's presence in this place. But Jesus said, hey, I want to see you at your house. How many of you are taking Jesus back home with you? How many of you are taking Jesus back to your workplace? And not just, not just settling for the experience that we get every Sunday. Jesus wants to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship, and, and I love that you guys are here, but it doesn't happen here. This is just where we start off the week. And, and then on Monday, we got to hit the word. 
We got to have our own devotional. We got to listen to Christian music. We got to we got to have our friends that, that that we lift each other. We it starts on Monday. It does it it starts in God's house, but it, this is this is God's house. It starts here, but it doesn't just happen every 7 days. We take it back home. Jesus wants to have a one-on-one relationship away from the crowds. It's beautiful to to experience Jesus together. We've had a phenomenal worship. I was just mentioning to you guys. But where true change happens is on a one-on-one basis with Jesus. Jesus knows your name. Jesus wants to deal with you individually. Jesus wants 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 you to take him home with you. Jesus didn't care about what the crowd said or what the crowds thought. He still wanted to have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus doesn't care if you've come here and you were partying last night. Jesus doesn't care if if maybe you were were kind of timid where where you're you're hot on Sunday but then cold on Saturday and Friday or or, or maybe tomorrow. Jesus says, hey, I don't care what anybody says. I want to have a relationship with you. Jesus had an encounter with with Zacchaeus and he was never ever the same and that's what he wants to have with you the last thing I want you to write down and then I'm going to have Caesar come up because when I close and Caesar's on the keys it just makes it nicer right no it just makes me hurry up um but listen the fourth thing I want you to write down hey it's Super Bowl Sunday we got we got to get home some of you guys still haven't gone to H-E-B to buy all the meat you know and and I still haven't even gotten an invite Robert what's, what's the deal man had to call you out in front of everybody. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I already got an invite, sorry. Uh, but, but listen, listen. The, uh, the, uh, but, but Fernando needs an invite, everybody. <laughs> the last thing I want you to write down is the response to Jesus was immediate. The response to Jesus was immediate. Zach repented from his sins. Zach promised to make a difference with the treasure that he already had. He said, hey, I'm going to give half of my possessions to the poor. Sack vowed to, to right all the wrongs. He said, if I have cheated anybody, I'm going to give them four times the amount I cheated them. I'm going to right all the wrongs. He was, he was a man that was eager for some good news. He was a man that had been searching for, for somebody to take this burden of, of, of being a cheater, of this burden of, of being looked at as a sinner. He was ready for a new life. He was ready for genuine change, but it took that Jesus encounter for that to happen. God wants to have an immediate response, and let me tell you, there are so many people searching right now. There are so many people searching. My wife and I were surprised that uh, uh, we had somebody come to church the last, the last two weeks that we invited over a year ago. God is doing his own thing. But imagine if a year ago we hadn't invited him. He still wouldn't be here. There are people searching because there are hospitals full. There are people worried. There are people having anxieties. Do I have COVID? Am I going to get really sick? Am I going to lose my job? Is the government going to shut us down again? You know, are there lions and tigers and bears? Oh, my. There's so many things that people are worried about because the title didn't fulfill them, because the money didn't fulfill them. Because having the big house, having the nice car, getting that degree still wasn't enough. And my question to you is, are you helping people who are searching? They're searching in the wrong places. They're they're searching at nightclubs. They're searching with drugs. They're searching with sex. They're searching with alcohol. They're searching with so many things. And they're still not finding something that can fill the void that only Jesus can fulfill. So I want to close with this. Do you want to be like the crowd? Do you want to be like the crowd? How are you going to respond, church? How is CDLF going to respond? Are we going to be like the crowd? Because we're going to look at his appearance and we're going to say, hey, he doesn't have a dominating uh, a phys- physical appearance. There's nothing extraordinary about him drawing us in. He looks bad. He smells bad. Why do I even want to get him close to Jesus? Are we going to be like the crowd and block somebody that looks different from us from getting to Jesus? 
Are we going to be are we going to be like the crowd and, and and look at his occupation and say, "Hey, he's got a certain reputation." He's known as as the tax collector. He's known as the thief. He's known as the cheater. He's known as the divorcee. He's known as the guy that's all tattooed and pierced up. He's known as the guy that, that likes to drink. He's known as the guy that likes to watch pornography. What is it? What, what is the reputation that other people have? And are we the crowd that's judging and keeping people from being able to get to Jesus? Are we like the crowd just blocking his way to Jesus? Are we like the crowd mum, mumber, uh, uh, I can't even say the word. We're murmuring. Hey, did you see that guy that came to church? I heard, I heard he was, I heard he's, he got married twice and he's divorced again. He's been doing drugs. He looks kind of bad. Did you see he came in shorts? Did you see he came wearing a hat? Did you see what, what he looks like? Did you see that girl? I heard that girl was easy. I heard back in high school, she used to sleep with everybody. Hey, hey are, are we a church like, that, that's acting like the crowd that's just murmuring and keeping people from Jesus because of their old reputation, because of what they look like, because of their deficiencies and their, in ways that they have come short? Or I believe that in 2021, we're going to be more like the tree. We're going to be more like the tree because we're going to lift others to be able to get a glimpse at Jesus. Can you come up here, Fernando? Come up here. Come up here. Hurry, but hurry, 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 hurry. Come, come up here. Come here. Listen. Go. Ta-da. <laughs> are we, are we going to be like the tree that helps, that lifts others up? to see Jesus in the midst of COVID in the midst of anxiety in the midst of, of financial of financial need are we going to lift others are we going to encourage others are we going to be like that tree and, and show kindness even when it's not convenient for us are we going to show love even though we may not have chosen to be in relationship with them are we going to be like that tree and, and invite somebody to church? Invite somebody to experience a relationship with Jesus? How are you going to be this year? Because the normal says, we'll just be a part of the crowd. We can still see Jesus. We can be close to Jesus. We can even be in the front of the line. We can be in front of the crowd. We can be the ones singing in the first aisle. That's what the normal would say. But the new normal says, no, no, no. Don't worry about being in the front. Be in the back. Be the tree. Be, be strong. Be rooted. Be planted. Be ready to lift others. Be ready to look past their appearance. Be ready to look past where, in ways where they were short in their life. That's what the new normal is. And, and I don't want you to miss what we're coming next week. We're going to talk about a new love. I want you to all to stand to your feet. How are you going to respond? You have an individual responsibility. Because you can look for the position. You can look for the house. You can look for the car. You can look for the wealth. You can look for that 401k amount, retirement amount. You can look for that, those grades. You can look for things here and there. But it's never going to fulfill your life. You're going to find yourself searching like Zach until you have an encounter with Jesus. When you have an encounter with Jesus, your story is going to change and it's going to be evident. It's going to be visible to others. Other people saw that he gave away half of his possessions to the poor. Other people saw that he uh, was going to right his wrongs and give everybody four times back what he had stolen. Other people saw his commitment he made verbally. Not only that, but look at what Jesus said. Jesus had to acknowledge him in the crowd. He said, to, this is what Jesus said. He said, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. Maybe some of you today need to go up to somebody and said, hey, you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. No longer are you going to have to deal with your past. No longer are you going to have to worry about your old reputation. No longer are you going to have to worry about the things where you came short because you are a son of a daughter of Jesus Christ. And that is what we are called to do. 
When somebody says, hey, hey, when, the, when, when people start murmuring, you got to shut them up. Hey, shut up. That's the blood of Jesus that can wash away the sins, just like he washed away my sins. Maybe his sins look different than my sins. Maybe his sins were bigger than my sins. You don't know. You don't know my life. Jesus washed away my sins, your sins, and everybody who is willing to give their life to Christ. And it's evident you're going to be able to see it. So church, let's be trees this year. Let's invite somebody. Let's show fruit. Amen? I urge you, text somebody, call somebody. I know, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Let's, let me pray for you. But, but first, I want to pray for somebody who's been searching. Somebody who's, who's been searching maybe on the news. Maybe you're searching in all the crazy UFO stuff. Maybe you've been searching and trying to find out why can't I fulfill my joy. Maybe you've been searching and because the normal says, hey, work hard, play hard. Maybe you've been working hard. And, and that, was, that was your normal. You've been working hard until you get that position. Until you get that degree. Until you get paid. And, or maybe you've been looking at other things and you've been playing hard. You've been going after every girl. You've been going after every guy. You've been going after all these kinds of substance because you're trying to fill that void. My question to you is, are you ready to end your search? Because Jesus wants to have an encounter with you today and every day of your life. If that is you, I want you to open up your heart. Everybody, heads closed, eyes bowed. No, heads bowed, eyes closed. If that's you today and you're in this building, I just want you to lift up your hand and say, hey, I want to open up my heart and give it to Jesus. If that's you online, just let us know. Amen. Thank you for raising your hand. Thank you for raising your hand. We have three people, four people. We ha if, if you're online, raise your hand. If you're watching this later on YouTube, send us a message. Raise up your hand there. Wherever you are, God is calling you. Stop the search. Stop the search. Stop calling 911. Jesus is here. So just repeat after me and say, Dear Heavenly Father, the whole church is repeating together. Dear Heavenly Father, I open up my heart today. Come inside and clean me of my sin. I'm ending my search because I have found you. You love me so much that you sent your son to die for all my sins. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And from now on, I will live with purpose. I will stand like a tree and lead others towards you. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now I wanna pray for all of you because listen, if, if we're really, really honest, at times we have acted like the crowd. At times we're like, man, we, we, we wanted to be so close to Jesus that we were preventing others from being able to see Jesus. Oh, look at that, in Spanish it's called santurron. Right? We, were being, we were being so holy. We were being so, so, so righteous, right? We were being so good that other people that were full of sin, man, I can't even talk to that guy. He's just going to judge me. I can't even get close to that. You have Jesus, but people can't even get close to you because you're way too Christian. You're way too saved, right? In, in English, there's that oversaved. Is that, is that the? You're, that guy's oversaved, right? At times, we have been the crowd. At times we've been the crowd. Instead of lifting others, we pushed them down so we could look. Let us be the tree the rest of this year and the rest of our lives. Let us be like the tree and say, hey, we're going to lift others. When they're sick, in their time of need, when they're frustrated, when they're angry, when life didn't go their way, when they lost a loved one, when somebody insulted them, when something called them bad, when, no matter what happened, we're going to lift them up so that they can see Jesus. Because that's where true change happens. Amen. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your ways, Lord. Your ways, your normal is different than the world's normal. Your normal is better. Normal says, hey, work your butt off until you get that degree. Work your butt off until you get paid. Work your butt off until you have that position. But you say, hey, my identity is not found in your job title. Your purpose is not found in your wealth. 